Okay, welcome back for Q&A number nine. Um, I'm gonna touch on test anxiety briefly because I think I already did, but the bottom line on test anxiety is not making any exam that your child takes as like a life or death thing, like the ACT and the SAT was for me in high school. It was brought to us like this test is gonna determine where you go to college and your whole future. For our kids, it's a test that they take as many times as they need to and to get the score that they need and then re-report the score. And we always tell our kids, we laugh with them, we cry with them, whether they're successful or things don't go well. We love them either way. And so we really try and reduce the test anxiety by letting them know it's not life or death at all. Um, Paris Randall wanted to know about child discipline, um, how to be patient with so many kids and creating a godly home. Well, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm a perfect mom or my kids are perfect. And honestly, uh, when my kids were little, I probably yelled too much. Um, and through some embarrassing moments of feeling like, oh, the neighbors probably think I'm a horrible mom. I tried to um, realize that um, God's watching and in a good way and I want to be the best loving mother that I can be. And when I feel myself getting frustrated with my kids, it's good to put yourself in a timeout and go pray. Um, that's good for raising kids and even in marriage and any relationship to try and not um, lash out in anger. And if you feel yourself getting frustrated, giving yourself a timeout. And I think that in our book, we kind of talk a little more about the ins and outs of just dealing with difficult, strong-willed children. And with 10 kids, we've had all kinds. We've had the parent-pleasing kids and the kids that are passive-aggressive, the kids that want to hide things, and then um, the kids who are just going to say that they're doing what you want them to do, and then they turn 18 and do whatever they want to do. So definitely not perfect family here. The main thing is to be in prayer for your kids, um, teaching your kids God's word and using Proverbs to try and um, raise wise children as best as we can. And yes, your patience does um, grow as you have more kids. I believe you learn to not sweat the small stuff, uh, pick your battles and realize um, what's really important and I hate to say it this way, but kind of lower some standards where it doesn't matter so much and then raise the standards in character development, especially now looking back, now that we have a couple of kids that um, you know, have left our Christian faith and that's very hurtful and I, my heart is burdened for them. But you know, ultimately it's their decision and so all we can do at this point is pray for them. Um, creating a godly home again just bringing God's word in and praying every day with your kids is really all all you can do and try and set a good example uh, Petra Nicoyo uh, wanted to know about dual enrollment we've got to get a lot of que questions about this because people can't figure out how do you do this when they're so young and the answer is um, it just depends on what state you're in and what um, policies that the um, colleges have in California, it was simply, they had to be like a junior in high school. So as soon as we were able to promote our kids and let them be um, advanced in their subjects so we could say this is an 11th grader, then they could do a role. And in that state, it was free. Um, when, you, when we came to the South, the, there were more requirements that they had to have a certain score on the SAT or ACT. And at the time that we were doing it, those scores were actually higher for a dual enrolled student than it would be for just coming in as a freshman. I don't understand why they do this. It's kind of a, it was a disincentive to get kids to be dual enrolled. I don't know if, I don't really know what the philosophy is behind that. Maybe they want kids to stay at their public schools longer Maybe it has to do with money, I don't know. But I do know that whatever the requirement was, we always tried to meet it with integrity 
We're not trying to cheat our way through the system. We did mention using a back door in our book to get kids into college, but that is not sneaking in. That's not the same thing. A back door would be, how do we meet the requirement for us and for our individual child? So if it means promoting them because they're ready, um, not necessarily advertising on the application how old they are because we think that's irrelevant. I think we've proven that that's irrelevant. The main thing is, are they at that grade level? And so depending on what institution you want them to take their dual enrollment classes, that we would look at the requirements and try and meet them. And if there's ever an or phrase, like they need to be 15, <clears throat> excuse me, or a sophomore or a junior, we will concentrate on getting them to that level. But then once we realized that here in the South, they were charging for those classes, we realized, you know, they're so close to graduating at this point because they're in high school or they're getting towards the end of high school that we thought, why not just um, move on ahead quickly and get them graduated so that then they can get grants, you know, either a Pell Grant, an Alabama grant, or scholarships or which weren't so many at the undergraduate level, but getting them to graduate so now they can get financial aid if needed. And I know that's kind of controversial right now, the whole student loan forgiveness thing. But at the time, that's what we, we did for our kids is getting them to just be on financial aid by going at least half time, then we didn't have to worry about paying, we didn't have to worry about age requirements because they were high school graduates. Um, so uh, this person commented saying that um, where she lives, you actually have to be enrolled in a public school to go. So again, you just have to go to the institution's website, institution's website and figure out what the requirements are and see how you can meet them with integrity. And if it's not working for you now, there's so many online options that just find somewhere, shop elsewhere, take your money elsewhere, um, use your energy, um, educating your kids and advancing them rather than trying to fight a system that's not working for you. And that's just um, working smarter and not than, rather than harder. Um, we, again, a reminder to never compromise your integrity. Don't feel like you're doing anything wrong by trying to backdoor your young student into college early. We are, as homeschool uh, parents, we are usually over preparing our kids and we're trying to help them get ahead. So don't ever feel like um, like you shouldn't be doing this. We, we encourage it and to get them to graduate early. Um, one university that was very um, kind of friendly towards this was Faulkner University here in Montgomery. And um, let me see. She also mentioned that she's got her kids reading our book and uh, it's definitely not classical literature, but I would say it's good nonfiction. Uh, it would help if you wanted your kids to read our book, read it for themselves. I think that they could um, catch the vision and read about how normal our kids are. Maybe they can relate to one of our kids and think, you know what, I can do this too. Because this way you're using that college carrot to dangle in front of them, like we talk about in our book, where they can see themselves actually doing it. And if they can catch the vision, there's really no stopping them. All you have to do is facilitate at that point and let them know what they need to do next to get to college early. And I think that reading our book would, would help them see that. Um, and also saying, hey, if you read this book, I'll give you five bucks. And that's how I always did it when I really wanted them to read something. And there's another book that I thought was part of their uh, social studies even, if you want to call it that. Um, and that's A Full Quiver by Rick and Jan Hess. I thought it was a great book. Um, most of our kids have read that book. It will dispel the overpopulation, overpopulation myth. Uh, and even uh, Elon Musk has figured that one out, um, that we're having a population crisis. 
So, um, you know, God says be fruitful and multiply and having 10 kids, obviously I believe that. And if you uh, have kids, uh, several kids in your family and you want them to feel like uh, it's a beautiful thing to be part of a big family, then uh, we'd invite you to read that book. And uh, tune in next time for our next Q&A. Thank you so much.